Today, we will be covering lesson name, a case of suspicion in your syllabus. So, learners, let's begin with the chapter. Let's go through the background of the author. So, let's go through it one more time. The first theme in uh, the lesson is that war is never over. Wars affect people negatively. On one hand, they lose their body parts and they have scars and even Evans was a victim of that. But, you know, Benson did not ignore that. On the other hand, it affected Evans' scars because of the war. It affected Benson and his psyche. So even if the war ends, but war is never over in the minds of people. Plus, uh, when in a war and after a war, people are always in a hurry. They do things without permission and deal with people in an informal way. This is exactly what happened when Evans and Dr. Benson, this was exactly what happened with Dr. Evans, with, Do with Evans and Dr. Benson. Evans was talking to Dr. Benson as if he knows him for ages and as if he is his friend. So war makes you informal and you trust people very easily. And the second theme is that you should not judge people from their appearance. Although the appearance is very important, but sometimes the appearance of some people misleads us to negative things such as making a wrong judgment on people and that may lead to bad consequences. This is like what happened in the story when Dr. Benson judges Evans as he was as as if he was a very bad person and he judged Evans from his behavior and his appearance especially the scar but at the end he discovers that Evans is a good brave and innocent person so we would search on the deep and not just depend on the appearance of people why should we never judge a book by its cover I have been uh, reiterating this statement, you know, a lot. So learners, you must be wondering that why should we not? Why should we never judge a book by its cover? Well, there are many reasons why we must never judge a book by its cover. The first one is that you know nothing about someone just by their outward appearance. Outfits don't define your character your behavior does great achievements are born and not born from fancy suits but from great minds okay learners always remember that great achievements they are born they are revolved and not from some fancy suits that if you wear good clothes you can't judge a person by good clothes okay great achievements are born from great minds and great minds do not need suits they do not need fancy suits to feel and look important to help you understand the phrase better let us take a look at a story with the same moral so learners, I'm sharing a small anecdote with you so that you understand the phrase better. Once there was a woman who was going on a train journey. She forgets her wallet at home. While waiting for the train, she feels hungry and goes to a restaurant. With the limited money she orders, the cheapest meal, that is a plate of rice, and goes to the washroom. On returning, she notices a shabbily dressed man sitting on the table eating from that plate of rice. This makes her very angry and she thinks he stole her plate. But she did not say anything. 
she started eating from the same plate. The man gets up and leaves. However, soon the lady realizes that she left her belongings on another table. The table that had her plate of rice was kept untouched and she was eating from the man's plate, but he did not say anything to her. She realized how she judged him for being a thief because of his clothing, when in reality, she was eating from his plate. To conclude, I can say that it is not right to assess people on the basis of their appearance. For instance, if you look at a good looking person, you can only see their skin color, physical traits and maybe fashion. But what about beyond that? Okay, what about beyond that? What if the good looking person turns out to be horrible in nature? Thus, you see how outward appearances can be misleading. They are basically valueless things. So never judge someone on their face value. Understood learners? So you should never judge a book by its cover. It means that you should never judge someone on their face value. Wallace in the story wanted to teach the readers the lesson in which, you know, in his every story, what, what does Wallace say? Wallace tries to teach readers lessons which will be useful for them. Every lesson is interesting and is full of lessons that can be, you know, mentioned and which, and, and which can be accepted in your life and used by you in your daily and day-to-day -day, uh, practices. So what Wallace is trying to tell you that appearance is nothing and, and you shouldn't judge anybody by their appearance and appearance of a person does not show everything. The story, a case of suspicion, it's short, but it's very moralistic and it teaches us a lot of things. So learners, let's go through some important points from the text. Well, uh, Dr. Benson, like you know, after midnight went to deliver a baby. He met, he met Evans in his way and misjudged him because of his appearance. Sometimes uh, appearance of people, it can mislead us to negative things such as making a wrong judgment on people and that might lead to bad consequences. Learners, let's go through some important words and their meanings from the text. Incessantly means constant or repetitive. Obstacle means medical tools. Obstacle case, you remember, like Dr. Benson, he carries an obstacle case while he is on his way to Mrs. Ortley's house. So obstacle, medical tools. Mechanic, who's a mechanic? In the lesson, Evans, he was a mechanic. So a mechanic is a skilled worker who repairs vehicles. Holster, so holster is basically a cover which is made of leather and it is used for carrying a gun. Inscription. Inscription means words engraved on a stone, monument or a book or on a watch. Like in the end, what do we learn? We learn that uh, the watch belonged to Evans. How? Because his name was inscripted on the watch. Okay? Now learners, let's uh, fill in the blanks with the correct phrasal verb. Okay, so uh, the first blank, every wise person dash a little money for a rainy day. Choose the correct phrasal verb and answer the statement. 
every wise person dash a little money for a rainy day. Excellent! Every wise person puts by a little money for a rainy day. Very good! Now look at the next blank. Please dash the fire after you have cooked rice. Please dash the fire after you have cooked rice. Excellent! The answer is put out. Please put out the fire after you have cooked rice. Next, the meeting was dash as the chairman was not well. Come on learners, answer the blank. Come on, you can do it. Choose the correct phrasal verb. Very good. The meeting was put off as the chairman was not well. Next, please dash the dictionary on the top shelf after you have looked up the meaning of the words. I repeat, please dash the dictionary on the top shelf after you have looked up the meaning of the words. Excellent! Put back. Please put back the dictionary on the top shelf after you have looked up the meaning of the words. Next sentence learner. Dash your cardigan as it is cold. Very good. Put on your cardigan as it is cold. Very good. I am, um, you know, it's your, you're answering all correctly. Last. The team dash a great performance. Choose the correct phrasal verb. Excellent. The team puts up a great performance. Very good. So these were some exercises in your chapter. Okay. So you have successfully completed the exercise on phrasal verbs. Now learners, what is an experience? Okay, you have, I hope you have different experiences every day. But can you define experience? All of us, we keep having some experience or the other every day. But how can you define experience? We can perhaps say that an experience is an event that affects or influences one in some way. In this lesson, you are going to learn about reporting or describing experiences. Experiences are something that form a part of your life. They are memories of what you have been a part of. Think a little deeper and you will realize that an experience could make or break your life. It could be good, unforgettable experience or a bad one that you would greatly like to erase off. Your mind, look, okay, it, you, it can be different kinds of experience. Some experiences can be good and some experiences can be bad which you would like to erase off. Well, just imagine having an experience that you would like to share with your friends, family and colleagues. For instance, uh, you have been on a trip to your hometown lately and you've had the best time and experience of your life. It's a trip that you want to hold on to, that you want to hold on forever and tell your near and dear one all about it. A few simple steps that you are set to head on your journey of the description. Make sure you the words that you use are handy and you narrate your experiences in fluent English. Learners, while you're describing an experience, pay heed to the minute details. Do not forget the details involved. And many times, many things go unsaid. But while you are sharing your experience with others, try to include 
the small details also. In short, in this case, look at the bigger picture. Okay, if you want, include, dig into some details, include details. You must also use adjectives to describe the destination and to describe your experience. While you are describing your experience, imp you know, try to use good impressive words and for that you must improve your vocabulary. Uh, now that you are on a trip, describing your trip, you must insert the details of what you felt, of what you went through, okay? You must include your emotions in your experience. This will not make your description interesting, but it will also enhance and develop your English speaking skills. Do not only describe the place and the site. Be more insightful and personal to add your own touch to the narrative as well. Uh, picture yourself back there. Run back down the memory lane to help you remember what happened when and how the whole experience was etched in your mind. A feeling of nostalgia should pass through your veins as you describe your experience to someone, which in true sense would mean that you are now mastering the art of description. Similarly, mastering English as a language and being confident and accurate while narrating the description is one of the best ways to learn English. It is essential that you understand that you're narrating an experience to someone. It is important to have their attention for as long as your description lasts. You should read some books that are based on descriptive writing, which will certainly improve your English and make you a favorite storyteller in your friend among, you know, in your gang among your friends and colleagues. The language that you will need to use for describing the experiences will be, you know, in the following areas that while you're, ex while you're describing your experience, try to, ex try to express uh, in past tense, okay? Use past tense while you're describing your experiences. Uh, you must focus on the details and you must uh, you know, report complete actions. Okay, you must describe your own thoughts and feelings. Make your experiences personal. Make the other person relate with you. If it's a personal experience learners, use I. Okay. Use active voice. Okay, and even active voice while you're sequencing something in the past. Use all forms of past tense and uh, make sure that your experiences are in a sequence. Okay, you can use linking verbs as sequencing devices. So make sure that you follow a chronological order while you are sharing your experience, that your experiences are structured. I don't think it's that difficult, is it? So learners, give it a shot and see for yourself, okay? Write your experiences, go and just write your experiences, just take it as a homework and do it. Now learners, in the chapter, uh, we have also come across uh, examples of reported speech. So what is reported speech? Reported speech is when we tell someone what another person said. To do this, we can use direct speech or indirect speech. One example of direct speech is, I work in a bank, said Vinay. So if we have to change this statement into indirect speech, what will we say? Vinay said that he worked in a bank. So learners, when you are changing direct speech into indirect speech, you must use past tense. And, and like, you know, 
previously I was telling you how to report an experience. Even while reporting an experience, you must incorporate reported speech. In direct speech, we often use a tense which is further back in the past than the tense originally used. This is called backshift. We also may need to change other words that were used. For example, we, we must change the pronouns also. Now learners, what are interrogative sentences and what do you mean by interrogative sentences in the reported speech? Sentences that are used to ask questions are called interrogative sentences. They end with a question mark and there are two types of interrogative sentences. One that can be answered in either yes or no and ones that cannot be answered in yes or no. They have to be explained in detail. So, okay, so have you understood interrogative sentences? Good. For example, in direct speech, my friend said to me, what are you studying? So it's an interrogative statement. Now, how to change it into direct speech? My friend asked me what I was doing. So here, even the pronoun has changed from you to I. So while you are changing interrogative sentences, make sure that you change the form of the pronoun as well. Process. Okay, learners, let's go through some steps required for changing interrogative sentences into indirect speech. First, remove the quotation marks and the commas from the reported speech. Put the question mark at the beginning of the reported speech when the question can't be answered in yes or no. If the question can't be answered in yes or no, replace the helping verb with if or whether. Put the subject of the reported speech after it. Put the verb after the subject. Replace the question mark with a period or a full stop. The reported verb say in the direct speech be changed to ask or inquire. Okay, so you know if in the, indi if in the direct tense we say, we sometimes use the word say. But while you are changing direct speech into indirect speech, word say changes to ask or inquire. Now learners, let's conclude the session. Let's go through the main idea of the story one more time before we end today's session. The main idea of the story is that one should never judge someone without investigating. When Mr. Benson was unable to find his watch, he suspected Evans without any important reason except for the fact that Evans was too friendly and put his cigarette packet in Mr. Benson's pocket without asking and was a jobless man in the middle of a cold night and that he had given a lift out of kindness. Mr. Benson was wrong to judge him and later found out that the watch he had gotten from Evans at gunpoint was Evans' watch and not his own. And he was only being suspicious. The story gives us the main idea of not judging without thinking and also gives us the moral that don't judge a book by its cover. Okay learners, let's end today's session. I hope you found today's lesson uh, helpful okay but please read it again do the back exercises do in text questions do terminal questions and practice on your own okay and if you have any doubts you can mention in the comments section thank you so much